Thank you so much, um, and thanks for the invitation, um, Mr. Chair, um, dear Malcolm. Um, I'm going to do something unusual today. And, uh, well, the chair is not really surprised, for he knows me a little bit better. But instead of delivering a speech, um, I prepared uh, the speech, no doubt, the list of digital progress and concerns since our last exchange, and I will send it today. Um, in uh, a letter to Malcolm, and I'm certain that your chair is distributing that. But last Saturday, um, on the plane to Egypt, by the way, no holiday, but just a extremely uh, fascinating meeting with activists for human rights and women rights and um, uh, blockers um, and social media uh, people, my goodness, if we are complaining, then I advise you to go for just a day over there and never give up is their line and under really circumstances. So I'm inspired, so to say. But during that flight, um, I was reading the speech and I realized something. And I thought, we need a different and very political discussion. For this house is a political meeting point. And I pretend to be a member of a political body too. And if you are talking about a real political discussion about delivering a telecom single market, then we are talking. But then we should talk in a different way, so to say, than just give you an overview. And the overview will be in the letter, no doubt. So I address this remark to all the members of Parliament. And I know you are uniting the quality of Parliament, but uh, over your head, so to say, it is talking to all the members of Parliament. And I will, of course, answer any question you put at the table uh, about the digital agenda, and especially about cybersecurity, for that is really an, 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 a very serious issue. But what my suggestion to you is, let's do more today. And you and I share the stake in this debate, so tell me Will you join me in building something special between now and the European elections? And that is my cater in which I want to address what I have in mind. And I want us, you and me, to show citizens that the EU is relevant to their lives. And we are often talking, but the follow-up of talking and just delivering, well, and that it's about delivering. And that we made the digital rules catch up with their legitimate expectations. For that is often at stake at the moment. Anyhow, that's my experience, that citizens, wherever in what part of Europe you are discussing with people, that people are saying, okay, we get your point of a united Europe, we get your point of a single market, but please we have legitimate experience and uh, legitimate expectations. So just show us. And I want you to be able, and that's not because I'm much older than you are, but it is because I have been a politician in former days on a national level, so I pretend to know a bit. I want you to be able to go back to your constituencies and say that you and that we are able to end mobile roaming costs. And I want you to be able to say that you saved their right to access the open internet by guaranteeing just net neutrality. And I want you to be able to say we took real action on cybercrime and other threats. And you know me in the meantime, after eight and a half years working together with a lot of you, sometimes in other fields, but you know me, and I'm not difficult to uh, get an impression of, for I'm Dutch straightforward, not a diplomat. Uh, and, and you also know that I'm um, someone who has strong opinions. Well, at my age, you don't change that, and I don't want to change it, for I think it's also uh, giving uh, food for um, a yeah, worthwhile debate. Um, and. I also know that we didn't always show in uh, shared opinions. That, that is also, but that would be strange if we, on, uh, in, in uh, several fields, 
always share the same opinions. But I want you to know that I have been impressed deeply, and that is out of my heart, by the commitment of the Parliament, Malcolm, of the Committee, to just the commitment to telecoms and wider digital issues, the commitment that we have in common. And you kept uh, fighting for change, and that was absolutely a, um, a recognizable issue. And you kept fighting for change when many leaders did not listen or did not understand or did neglect. And that impressed me um, and influenced me in a positive way. So that is, so to say, you were feeding my fighting spirit. And I want to channel your knowledge and I want to share your passion and into the legislation needed to deliver a real single market. For there we are talking of we, I myself, I'm always explaining wherever and to whomever that we have a crown jewel in Europe. And the crown jewel is, so to say, the single market. Still a lot to do, but the, the, the fact is there we have a single market. And it's my belief, Malcolm, that we can deliver such a package, but then I'm talking about a full, a final package around Eastern next year. 2014. Imagine um, that we could do that, but that is a close cooperation and that is really a will to come to such a uh, goal. It will be good for Europe, that is without any doubt. Good for the economy, grown stimulated, breaking uh, down barriers. But when I think about this package that I have in mind, I think about people rather than numbers, for that is one of those issues that we are often uh, attacked upon. You in Brussels, you are not thinking of people. In this case, I can assure you, I'm thinking about people uh, rather than numbers, so to say. Take, for example, the younger generation. And I learned the most of my young advisory board. They are quite smart. They are young. But, okay, that is changing every day, so to say. But they are smart in the way that they are not buying just nice stories and saying, wait a bit, and we, and so on. A new consultation and a new committee and a new, and so on and so forth. The young generation, that generation, that cares most about being connected. Being connect connected. And, by the way, that is the generation that votes the least. And that's an interesting category for all of us. And not because you can get a safer position in your constituency, that by the way is not a bad thing, but it is talking about involvement of all of the citizens, so to say. They, still talking about that young generation, they need a strong and digital economy to escape the unemployment trap. And I have often said, and Malcolm, we discussed it uh, recently, that the biggest threat at the moment is the horrible figure of youth unemployment in certain member states, but no member state is excluded from a rising figure of youth unemployment. And that is the worst we can uh, just face. And we have to tackle that, for otherwise we are talking about a lost generation and with a lot of consequences when you are talking about a lost generation. So to escape the unemployment trap, we need to have a strong and a digital economy and think also about the aging population. For there, perhaps we need a bit more explanation to them, not to you. I'm, I'm aware that you are aware. We are talking in the aged and aging population about people who need new digital services to stay healthy and active without losing their dignity and independence. And I'm always showing my own band, and I don't make an advertisement from which company it is. This is to be checked if I have enough exercise on a day. And if at the end of the day, and I can show it to you, for there is no 
So I didn't do a lot today, but I have to fill in that whole part. So, but, but this is, for me anyhow, a check, what am I doing for my condition? And at the end of the day, if it's not fulfilled, then I'm running a block again. And don't ask me if that's always a pleasure, but uh, anyhow. So talking about an aging population with the new digital services, there is so much at stake. And we can give them their dignity in living longer independent and still have a comfortable feeling that there is taking care of them if it's needed and your own check, by the way, with those digital services. And if we do this right, then digital connections can bring political connections. For then all the elderly people are also interested for they are interested in an independent and in a, a dignified world in which they can live. So digital dividends can bring social ones, easy like that. I'm not promising, Malcolm, a single market package that gives you everything you dreamed of. Um, I'm too old for that, um, for that is challenging, but let's be realistic. This package that I have in mind will have to strike a sensitive balance if we are to agree it quickly. And that is what is also limiting me, us, because it's great to have a, a broad debate, but if time is over, then it is not uh, implemented and it's not delivered. I'm promising you to spend the next 12 months, and I'm counting in your calendar, uh, so to say, building a bridge with you to our citizens and your constituencies. Whether they need it for travel or for trade or for transactions or for fun, our people need this reform. And everyone loves the benefits of EU price cuts to roaming. Come on, that is clear like crystal. It is the one thing even Euro critics agree the EU did well. If you are asking what was the first term of Barroso's commission best result, I can assure you it's this one. It's, and I can also assure you that there are a long list of other issues, but not as visible. And it could never, ever happen without the EU. So we couldn't have had that step without the EU. And this fact is also a challenge, so to say. Just give me, please, uh, a possibility to explain. On one hand, my portfolio is the source of this incredibly popular EU policy. And I give you your full share of credit, by the way. It's not me or it's not the Commission. It is quite often you who are pushing and were knocking on the door and rock the boat. Um, but on the other hand, we struggle to push other telecoms and digital issues to the top of the political agenda. And that is what is also involved in responsibility. Responsibility of you and of me, it's not only the sweet. Sometimes you have to take the issues out of the total package. A strong single market package is the way to change that. And it's how we can tell the world that Europe does get digital, it's how we can show voters that the EU does listen. Telcoms touch everything, and that is fascinating. And users are developing massive expectations of it. Yesterday we had an extremely fascinating uh, meeting with a couple of ministers of science and technology and of uh, the business world, the industry, the big shots were there uh, talking about electronics and that sector and remarkable um, what has been possible in one year to do together for all those big shots were standing like this. You are my competitor, so get out of my garden. And now we are connecting and we are just keeping them together and indeed with, at the end of the day, a deal. Last night there was a big deal that talking about electronics from 10%, talking about our global part in the cake, 
to 20% in 2020. And then we are talking about creating and talking about, indeed, uh, pushing jobs and the economy. I'm just using that example. It is so wide when we are talking about telecoms, for it's all connected. Well, it's all connected. Whatever you are using, it is. Markets must function. Devices must function. Uh, networks must function, so to say, and investment needs to happen. My biggest nightmare is that at a certain moment there won't be farmers in the street, but there would be the younger generation and the aging population and say, we bought all those devices, but for quality services, just, and they were, they are also coming over to this building, I can assure you, if we are not doing our job properly. So we can't afford today's countless, needless, artificial obstacles placed in the way. That is, in short, the, the point. And I was just wondering, thinking over our meeting, why are you applying for a membership of the European Parliament and not at home in the national parliament? Well, if you allow me to, to just think what you are uh, having in mind, um, I'm guessing in part because you didn't like artificial borders and that you thought, come on, that's not of um, this time. And that you believe we can achieve more than the freedom when the freedom and uh, competition are greater, the opportunity is bigger, and consumer rights are real. You yourself, Malcolm, are one of those examples. You left safe home and you came over and uh, you have to explain quite a bit at home uh, now and then. And you still have to, <laughs> I'm, I'm certain. Um, but in telecoms, of all sectors, there's no place for borders. It is artificial for, it is, by the way, per definition, telecoms is borderless, so to say. It is called the World Wide Web uh, for a reason, so to say. It's not just a fancy name. And there is no other sector of our incomplete European single market where the barriers are so unneeded and yet so high. And the time for change, in my opinion, is now. It's not too late, so to say. We can do the job. And change must come from all directions. But to be honest, it starts between us, in this room, so to say. Here it starts, that movement. It is a movement. It is absolutely a movement. And I sincerely hope that later on, the 30th of May is called that's the start of that movement uh, in Parliament. And our mutual responsibility and our greatest contribution will be to develop a radical <laughs> legislative compromise. One that our innovators and citizens can build on and will give a real result. I chose those words carefully, Malcolm, and perhaps that is not your common feeling that I'm always doing, but radical because we are talking about an economic disaster and that an economic disaster requires big, big actions. And we completely agree that it isn't a disaster at the moment. So uh, come on, let's, let's name it. Having said that, if it is an economic disaster, then we have to take action and big action. And the word compromise, for that was also mentioned, because everyone will have to give in order to get. And if you share that line with me, that that is realistic, that you have to give in order to get, we will each need to consider all the pieces in the jigsaw. And I'm just mentioning jigsaw for <laughs> not only our personal favorites or the visible or the sexy changes, are at stake. Often the invisible in investments are just as important for long-term consumer welfare. And in the case of roaming, it is only if a genuine single market actually exists, for otherwise it is an artificial measure with a disastrous consequence if you are not thinking over. So it's only if a genuine single market actually exists that roaming can cease 
and uh, to exist in legal or economic terms. And that is why we have to put in place all of the pieces of the jigsaw, and that is the challenge, so to say. Having said that, we need to avoid a, vo a, a fight about structures. I'm getting so fed up with all those fights about structures. And I'm not saying that it's always um, not to be done, but in this case, just let's avoid that type of uh, fights, for that is time-consuming, and then we are running out of time, so to say. We must keep citizens, not bureaucracy, at the front of this package. And that is what is just um, inspiring me. It is about citizen and not about the bureaucracy. And even if I'm losing a couple of friends in the bureaucracy, then uh, it, it's um, a fact of life. This aside, I come to you with an open mind about how to assemble the jigsaw. And I will take my responsibility for addressing the concerns of those who resist change. And I'm old enough to know that there are always people who resist, per definition, change, because it's giving uncomfortable feelings or whatever. And I'm not afraid to do that, because the potential is enormous. Well, I'm passionate, but that was already clear, and I shall tell you why. It's useless for me to rock the boat on my own. That is just perhaps nice for an afternoon, but that doesn't help. We have support from the highest levels. That is, I'm counting my blessings now and then. I'm getting support from the highest levels in the institutions to push forward. And you recognize when the Council uh, of Heads of State was giving that point. I count my blessings. But I can't do it without you for your important part of playing this game, and it's not a game, but playing this, is quite clear for me. I believe we have enough ground in common to rock the boat and that we can do it together and then sail into the harbor. Well, wouldn't that be nice? And all the political building blocks are there. Citizens want um, their frustrations dealt with. And you are aware of that, for I'm sure when you're going to your constituency that that is one of the main issues at home, but not only at home, also elsewhere. More companies will invest in the artificial, if the artificial barriers are uh, put down. And national governments tell us we have to do it, for that was the clear message. So if you believe in the single market, if you believe in strong Europe, that makes a practical difference to each citizen's life. Then not only believe in this, but let's act together. And that is the opportunity to stand up and count and be counted. I will fight with my last breath to get us then and there together. And that will make sense. And that will be the goal that we can do still in your office and in, in term of office and still in my term in office. Thank you.